Okay, one common thing that you might wanna do in Jitter is just take two matrices or images or video and mix them together in some different way. So maybe that's to make a crossfade or maybe that is to create something new and interesting or maybe you wanna make a masking effect. So if you're familiar with Photoshop and you wanna just see through part of an image like a stencil, and this is called masking. So today we're gonna to look at the computation behind three different ways of blending images together so that you can choose the one for the visual effect that works for you. Let's look at this patch that I have set up and just walk through the different components so that as we are talking about them, you know what's going on. So clearly I've got um, two images, this uh, rose bouquet and this black and white thresholded walnut tree. And I've imported them into the jit.matrix object here and I'm, I'm just sending them through in these three different mixing mechanisms. This whole set of code here is showing us individual channels of the red, green, and blue RGB channels. And this jit.submatrix object here, there's one here too, it says at dim22. This is just taking the, the upper um, top left pixels, the top four, and sending them out into a jit.p window so that we can see what integer values for each channel we have going on here. So if you remember this uh, patch, for example, this is the same thing that's happening here where we were able to look at an image and then click on different parts of it and visualize the, the, the red, green, and blue channels. Um, and so just to illustrate the math, I've taken just the top four left, uh, top left four pixels so that we can actually do some math on them. On the left-hand side, I have jit.xfade. In the middle, we have jit.op multiply, and on the right, we have jit.op addition. And just um, from the first glance at this patch, you can see that the output of these is vastly different than each other. Okay, I needed to refresh that one. So this is this looks like uh, you know two of them kind of crossfaded together, unsurprisingly. Um, this tree is just smacked on top of our roses, and then this is what we might call a masking effect. So let's head over to the whiteboard and take a look at this, and we're going to start with the addition, the jit.op plus, and that's because it's sort of the easiest one to understand. So I have a red channel right from my first image and my walnut tree image, and I am adding these together. And you can actually just take these numbers and you can add them together. So if we were to actually do that, we would end up with, let's see, 112 plus 255, that's 367, okay? And then four more numbers, and all of these numbers are gonna be bigger than 255. If you remember from our discussion on 8-bit, if you're familiar with 8-bit or tar data, our range of these values is zero to 255. So actually we cannot have a number of 367. So when we add anything to 255, we end up with just 255. It's maxed out. This is pure white and this is the highest number that we can get. So if we think about this in terms of our patch, this makes sense. Right, we had a white background on our tree Let's take a look at it. And we added some darker green-ish pixels from here. We added them and we got white. So if you have a white image background and then you're adding something to it, it's still white. You can't get any higher. This is, uh, the same principle is true with the black, except sort of a, a bit of the opposite. If you have all black, right here, and then you add a pixel to black. Black starts out as zero, zero, zero. All of those channels were zero, as we saw over here. And so the pixel value that you add is just exactly the same as it was. So this is what we might call masking where we are taking one image and the only part we're looking at is the part of another image that was all black. Okay, so this is 
there's me. Okay, so this is different from what we're seeing in the middle where we're doing some multiplication. So over here in the multiplication jit.op uh, operation, our result, let's see, is 1, 1, 1, 109, 113. I know you guys can't see me. So let's switch it so you can see me. So when we take our jit.op, we multiply from here to here. This is actually our result that we're getting. So if we're staying in 8-bit and you're imagining, OK, multiply 112 times 255, which might be what you're thinking, uh, that result is not 111. It's something much higher. It's, I don't know, it's like 28,000 something. Is that right? I don't know. It's big. That's the point, right? And it's not 111. So something else is happening here, something that is not multiplying by these 8-bit values. So this jit.op object, this multiply object, is actually doing something fancy for us. It's actually converting from 8-bit to a floating point value, then doing the multiplication, and then converting back. So what does that mean? That means that it actually takes 112, and it divides it by 255, so that we have this value now between 0 and 1 that represents the color. So 112 divided by 255, let's grab a calculator for that. So 0.439-ish. OK. And then it does the same thing for this second value. It converts it to 255. And that one's easy. We can just do one. And then we multiply this, and we end up with 0.439 times 1. We get 0.439. And then it converts it back into the range that we're expecting, into an integer value between 0 and 255 by multiplying again by 255. Okay, oops, zero point. And when we do that, we get 111. Now, 112 and 111 are darn close numbers. And if you were thinking, hey, we divided 112 by 255, we got 439, we multiplied it times 1, so it should be exactly the same. We should have gotten 112. You're right. There's an issue here with, uh, with the rounding, with how many values we actually round to. Um, I said 439 because I didn't want to remember any further than that. And Max also has a, a number of uh, values that it will use for this multiplication. It also doesn't round, it truncates. So at some point, right, these, it, in, in this operation, Max did the operation and then truncated the value. And so we ended up with, instead of 112, we ended up with something a little bit less, 111. Um, and it did that for all of these. So that's why all of these are just one value smaller because of how we, how we multiply this out. Now, I haven't actually done this to verify, but I think if we were to pull up our calculator, we could illustrate this. OK, so if we take 1112, we divide by 255, right? We have this 0.439215. If we multiply this guy again by 255, we should end up with 112, what we started with. But if we truncate it, let's see, 0.3. 439, and then multiply by 255. Yes, that is correct. So we end up with something just an itty bitty bit smaller than 112. It's close. It's 111. But Max, rather than rounding, like you would, like you've been taught to do, Max truncates this into an integer value of 111. OK, so that's multiplication. It gets a little bit confusing with the, the transformation to floating point values in between. Um, I guess one more thing about mul multiplication is that you'll notice that we have these, this tree with all zeros. And when we multiplied the zero times any 
color in that rose image, we just ended up with zero. So we've just smooshed these two image on, images on top of one another. Actually, the tree is on top of the roses. So the last one that we're gonna look at is this crossfade object. So that's over here on the left. And we notice that we have this value here. Maybe I can zoom in just a bit for you. We have jit.xfade, and then we have a message here, xfade, and a replaceable argument. And we can, right now, I have this set to half, 0.5. And I hit my bang to refresh. Right, so I've got what we might visually describe as half of the tree and half of the roses. If I set this value to, let's say, 0.2, this value is going to then take 0.2 of my left matrix and 0.8 of my right matrix. And let's bang that. So now I've got more of my roses and less of my trees. And if I were to drag this up and then refresh again, now I've got 0.92. That's a lot of this right-hand side matrix. And just a teeny tiny little bit, can barely even see it on the screen of my roses. I'm gonna put it back to 0.5 so we can see what's happening. Let's see, our answer is 182, 181, 183, 182. Let's see if I can remember that. Probably not. I've already forgotten. Did I do it wrong? Okay, you can see my scribbles now. So we did something to these two matrices, and we, in fact, our value was 0.5, our x fade value, 0.5. And we got 182. So let's look at this. 112, 255 equals 182. So what's happening here is a scalar on both of these matrices and then an addition. So what we're doing is we have 0.5. So that's right in the middle. So we took 0.5 and we multiplied it times this matrix, and then we took 0.5, and we multiplied it times this matrix over here. And we ended up with, let's come down here and show this. So half of 112, now I'm on the spot here, 60, no, 56. Yes, I don't have to erase. 56 and then half of 255, so 127. And then it added it together. And I ended up with 183. Okay, so we have the same kind of issue that we just had in the multiplication thing where we have this truncation error. I'm not gonna go through that again. It's close enough.